Hello and welcome back. I'm Natalie MacDonald and you're joining us here at Super Return Asia 2016. It's my great pleasure to welcome into the studio Logan Allen from Formation Group. Logan, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Okay, so firstly, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the key areas that you see within the mm -hmm. financial services sector that are likely to be disrupted by mm -hmm. some of the, the emerging themes we're seeing in fintech? Sure. Well, I would say th three things that we think about at Formation Group. One is uh, companies that become more like platforms. Um, when you think about a financial services firm, you think about a number of different offerings. And most financial services firms in the fintech uh, realm have really gone after specific verticals, payments, peer-to-peer -peer lending, robo-advisory. I think the winners ultimately are going to be the ones that combine all those offerings into a single platform. So in the U.S., I would give the example of uh, SoFi, uh, another company uh, in South Korea called Yellow Financial Group. They've really taken a comprehensive platform approach, which is the way that consumers are used to it, integrating, uh, or rather interacting with financial services companies. And then the two biggest themes are areas that we haven't seen significant disruption in, but I think are coming. Um, one is real estate. Uh, in terms of creating real estate marketplaces for buying and selling real estate. And then secondly is in, in insurance. And obviously insurance is a very diversified place. So health insurance, we're investors in a company called Oscar Health, um, which is trying to revolutionize the way insurance is purchased in the U.S. Uh, and you look at uh, uh, auto insurance and other aspects of insurance that we think are going to be better uh, served through technology. And also regulations. We know the regulatory landscape is really shaping a lot within this sector. Mm -hmm. How are you seeing approaches to regulation, both kind of at home and mm -hmm. also in Asia, and also that sort of interplay relationship also? Sure. Yeah, I think you're seeing a life cycle uh, occur in each country where you know they start perhaps with payments and then evolve into peer-to-peer -peer lending and then perhaps evolve into other forms of lending and then other services within f financial services. And regulators uh, are either uh, waiting and seeing and then instituting regulation, which is, has been the case in China, or in the U.S., they've really tried to get out ahead of the curve and pass things like the Jobs Act in the U.S., which has allowed for crowdfunding and these other innovations in financial services. I think you need to be, as an investor, very cautious about the regulatory regime because it can simply end the life of a company very quickly. And so if you don't have uh, de-risked, if you haven't de-risked the regulation uh, aspects of that company, then there's always going to be that fear. So we always tell entrepreneurs that they need to get out ahead of that regulatory conversation, engage with regulators, explain what they're doing and why it's different and why it's safe for consumers. Uh, and you know that will always be an overhang, I think, as we continue to evolve in financial services into perpetuity. And it's just something that you know, fintech companies are going to have to get used to. With that said, then, in terms of de-risking, what are some of the risks and the hurdles then that you note particularly mm -hmm. within this sector? I think a couple of things. One, in addition to regulation, and you've seen a number of companies in the U.S. who have not really paid attention to detail on the regulation side. So Zenefits, Prosper, Second Market. There's a lot of companies that tr got tripped up and in some cases were put out of business um, by uh, regulatory regimes. Um, I would say the second piece is financial services, much like healthcare, is one of those industries industries where you need resident domain knowledge. And if you are simply a technologist that's trying to disrupt that industry without any real domain expertise, you can run into a lot of hurdles. Um, and so I think the uh, talent aspect of fintech is a very tricky one where you need people with both technology backgrounds who can disrupt through technology, but also people who are very knowledgeable about financial services, the products, the regulatory aspects, and uh, all the processes that are involved because it is a very complex industry. Um, and then I think thirdly, we're seeing, particularly in the peer-to-peer -peer lending space, a lack of access to debt capital and being able to lay off those loans. And so I think you're having some scaling issues in these companies where they've gotten to a little bit of a plateau on how they can scale that core business, which goes back to my commentary on really needing to diversify those offerings and, and, and be able to scale up in that way and really cross-sell an existing customer base. You mentioned earlier 
verticals and, and platform like groups. Mm -hmm. Do you see that movement? Do you see that progression, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, in, in terms of covering both of those in, in perhaps mm -hmm. a more umbrella like operation? Mm -hmm. We do. We think that, particularly in emerging markets where, uh, using Korea as an example, they literally just started deregulating their market in 2014, if you can believe it. And so one of our companies is Yellow Financial Group, and they said, well, consumers in Korea are very traditional. They want to go inside of a bank and they want to see all of the suite of services that that bank has to offer and engage with them in a very singular way. If we start in only one vertical, we're not going to really gain their trust and we're not going to grab market share. So what we think that vertical players are increasingly going to add to those offerings and create adjacent offerings that make sense for their customer base. And we think those that don't are at risk of having one single revenue stream and not being competitive. If you're really trying to disrupt banks and traditional financial services players, you better have a whole suite of offerings to do so and deliver it in a more meaningful and di differentiated way from a customer experience standpoint and one that's uh, fully integrated because that will differentiate you from the traditional banks and you'll be able to gain trust because financial services is also one of those industries where if you don't have a brand and you don't have recognition, it is very difficult to acquire customers and to retain them from a long-term value standpoint. So. Logan, thank you so much for your insights today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Logan Allen there from Formation Group. You can catch more insights from industry leaders here at Super Return Asia. Just follow the hashtag SRAsia. I'm Natalie MacDonald. Until next time, it's goodbye.